swimming in the open Now look around, isn't this a new day? Make a move, doing things a new way A new way Cause this is our world And this is our time These are our plans We're gonna let them shine This is our place in the human race And we won't stop dreaming, no we won't stop dreaming Look ahead, we can see forever You and me doing it together Light it up, we can be a million stars You see we've come so far Yeah we've come so far Cause this is our world And this is our time And these are our plans We're gonna let them shine This is our place In the human race And we won't stop dreaming No we won't stop This is us. Florida International University presents the Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences 2021 Nursing Pinning Ceremony Live Stream Event, hosted by Dr. Aura Strickland. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem and FIU alma mater. Oh, say can you see? dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched We're so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star spend
the 2021 Nursing Pinning Ceremony live streamed event. I am Dr. Aura Strickland, Dean and Professor of the Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences, and I am honored to preside over this ceremony. Thank you for joining us this evening at Florida International University, Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences building. Our nursing students have excelled during some of the most difficult times that we have ever faced. Their resiliency, determined spirit, and commitment to succeed in the face of adversity is a reflection of the Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences heritage, and it deserves to be recognized. This is why we are here today. We are here to pay tribute to a new generation of nurses that adapted to change and continued their academic journey despite the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Here with us this evening is a legend, a man who redefined adaptation in healthcare practice. And his courageously led medical professionals for over 50 years. Dr. Yovana Gordon, our Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, is joining us from the recording studio and will formally introduce Mr. Cliff Morrison, your keynote speaker this evening. Take it away, Yovana. It is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Cliff Morrison, a man who in the early 1980s did what no other San Francisco General Hospital clinician had the courage to do, come up with a humane way to treat and care for AIDS patients. Nearly 3,000 cases of AIDS have already hit this city. Half those people have died. The AIDS epidemic was raging. They wanted to isolate us and quarantine us on an island. Could this be a disease spread through the air? We were expected to wear what we called spacesuits, and some would refuse to give care. It made me angry. We have to do something. At San Francisco General Hospital, the staff is gearing up for the opening of a special wing to treat AIDS victims. It was built by the nurses there. We were gay, we were straight, we were young, we were old. And of course, that was a time when nobody even knew how it was uh, spread. The danger was very real. AIDS is 100% fatal. We ought to be focusing on what we do to prevent all of us from getting the disease and dying. You have to get out of the mode that you're here for curing people and really get into the mode that you're here to care for people. People were like, well, you're probably going to get AIDS and you're probably going to die. I might have some anxiety about this, but I'm more pissed off and angry than I am scared. They made the rules as they went along. We decided that if we can't save these folks, we're going to touch them. This was a tangible thing you could do. Wash them, put moisturizer on them. You were allowed to love your patients. So much in life is not what you say or what you do, it's how you make people feel. It's broad change for how hospitals work. People came to our unit from worldwide to find out what we were doing, how or why. We weren't afraid. You don't have to have a hazmat suit every time you're around an AIDS person. You don't have to burn their bed because they died. The nurses were the real heroes. They stood up when nobody else would, and they were willing to take those risks. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a visionary and transformational leader, Mr. Cliff Morrison. I really want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of you, the students, the faculty, the staff, everyone for all of the hard work that you've done. Nursing education can oftentimes be challenging, but it sure is rewarding. And I wouldn't change those experiences for the world. Those are experiences that you will take with you wherever you go in the future. And I hope that you've had the opportunity at your time at FIU to work not only with the faculty and the staff, but also with your fellow students. Uh, so many people entering healthcare and particularly nursing today are coming in at a later age. And so they've already had the experiences of having 
uh, a first career or they were already an RN in the first place. I know that in my experiences, because I went through the first program, you know, which was RN to BSN, and part of the great experience that I had was not only having this wonderful faculty and being in a whole new setting and having the opportunity to explore and to learn, but we had each other. And all of us came from such varied backgrounds and we had experiences that were different from each other's. And I, I, I can't tell you how invaluable that was for me. I took that experience and when I left uh, Miami in 1979 and came to San Francisco to work on a project with the University of California. At first, I was going to only do that for a year. And at the end of the first year, I extended for a second. And then at the end of the second, I took a position as a clinical nurse specialist in the medical division at San Francisco General Hospital and just happened to be there when the first cases of what became known as HIV and AIDS came in. Because of my experiences, and, and I had already been hearing about this, I had immediately enrolled in a training program in the community with a program called the Shanti Project. And the Shanti Project had been around in San Francisco for many years, uh, primarily there for people with terminal illnesses uh, uh, and cancer. Um, it, it happened that Shanti had been staffed and, and many of the volunteers were from the gay community. So when this strange disease struck, the Shanti Project just stepped in right away and started doing all this work and developed training programs. Since they had the only training program around, I immediately joined them and entered their training program. And <clears throat> as I was finishing that training program was when the surge really began with people with HIV and AIDS at San Francisco General. And so I began to be asked uh, by uh, the physicians, the nurses, and also uh, the administration if I would assist in consulting in the critical care units where these patients were. So that's how I actually began informally doing that. And then at some point, as the cases began to increase, we reached a point where all of our critical care beds and five critical care units were filled with people with this disease. At that point in time, <clears throat> I was approached by one of the associate administrators who said, we really do need to do something to kind of formalize this. Uh, the care is, is all over the place. You're doing everything that you can, but we need to, you know, we need to have someone to coordinate this and would you consider doing it? So I agreed wrote up a job description for it. It later became the first clinical AIDS coordinator position in the U.S. And from that, I went on to work and work with, with other people in the other units in the hospital and also outside of the hospital. A lot of work at the University of California in San Francisco and uh, a, a lot of work with the San Francisco Department of Public Health. The experiences that I gained from all of that really helped me so much as I went on to develop the first special care unit 5B for people with HIV and AIDS. But what I'd really like to talk to all of you about today is how that experience really prepared me at this stage in my career, because I'll be retiring at the end of this year, I'll be 70. and. Over the past year, we've been dealing with another pandemic, and that is the COVID-19 pandemic. And as it began to emerge, I'm one of those people who did see many of the similarities uh, at that time thinking, well, you know, maybe there's something that I can assist with and helping others to understand some of this phenomena and some of these mysteries and some of these questions. And it was beginning to bring out a lot of different kinds of emotions in people, people not wanting to care for people, many of the issues that we dealt with before. And then a year ago this week, I was diagnosed with COVID-19 and became very critically ill. I was out of work for three months. When I returned to work in June, the COVID pandemic was truly 
out of control at that point. Uh, where I worked, we still had cases. I had apparently contracted COVID-19 occupationally from a, a, an older patient that I've been caring for here in this particular facility. What I learned out of that experience and what we've been doing here is really having to go back. And at first, <clears throat> you know, people were like, how do we do this? What do we do? And I started saying, I don't think we have to reinvent everything here. I think we already have a textbook down. We already have a foundation. We've been through much of this before. And so what I would really like to get across to you today is the importance of all of us, particularly in healthcare today, of being really good role models primarily. You know, as nurses, everybody looks up to us. It's no secret that that, that we are regarded in the most highly respected professional group in the United States. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and I think that this is an opportunity and a time for us to take advantage of it, just like we did back in, in the 1980s with the HIV pandemic. Since people look up to us and respect us, we have an obligation to not only be good role models, but to also teach and to reach out and to show compassion and to show that we care and to be flexible enough so that we can move with the changing events of the day. All of this is much easier said than done because just like with HIV and AIDS, the COVID-19 pandemic has unfortunately become highly politicized and we're part of that and there's no way that we can escape it. However, there are some things that we can do with it. We don't have to buy into it. It's not our role to take sides with any political party or any particular political position. COVID-19, HIV and AIDS are not political. They've been made political. We, as healthcare providers, as professionals, have an obligation, not only to ourselves, but to our communities and to the patients that we're serving, to be able to provide good quality, compassionate care without any concern of political issues or many of the social issues that we're all having to deal with today. So I'd like to end by saying, I know <clears throat> how important this is. So many of us have had to deal with this and in South Florida, you're dealing with it right now. I want to reach out to you. I want to say, I feel your pain. I know what you're going through. And this will end, it always does. Sometimes not the way that we want it to, but it will. The important thing for us to remember is that we do have to stay true to ourselves. We do have to show compassion and flexibility. And it's extremely important for all of us that we always show the world our best side. Remember, there's nothing like a really nice smile to make your day. Thank you. Cliff, thank you. Your remarks beautifully captured the essence of nursing. Most of all, thank you for all you have done and continue to do for academia and the local, national, and international healthcare communities. The Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences has forged a path of academic excellence that guides our faculty and students. Here with us this evening is Dr. Tammy Thomas. Dr. Thomas is our Associate Dean of Research and the Director of our Nursing PhD program. Dr. Thomas, will you please share with us what excellence is to the Nursing Honor Society. The Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences is all about excellence. Today, we recognize the excellence of individual nursing students, members of our FIU Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences, Pi Alpha Chapter of Sigma Theta Tau. The Honor Society of Nursing Sigma Theta Tau International, STTI, recognizes the outstanding academic achievement of nurses and nursing students from its inception. STTI has recognized the value of scholarship and excellence in nursing practice, research, scholarship, and leadership. 
I am proud to stand before you and congratulate you as a graduate and member of Florida International University's Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences Pi Alpha Chapter of Sigma Theta Tau. As Associate Dean of Research and Director of our PhD program, it is my hope we cross paths in the near future as you continue to build on your heritage of excellence and academic achievement. Congratulations, graduate. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Your remarks are timely and serve as a perfect segue into the presentation of the 2021 Nightingale Excellence Award and the Nursing Worlds Ahead Award recipients. Dr. Monica Flowers, the Vice Chair of the Undergraduate Nursing Department, is joining us from the studio to present the Nightingale Excellence Award. The Nightingale Excellence Awardee is a graduating senior who exemplifies nursing, academic, and clinical excellence as well as has the potential to inspire future generations of outstanding nursing students through outstanding leadership qualities. While each graduate is an excellent student and a brilliant nurse, the faculty was tasked with electing one among you. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating the 2021 Nightingale Excellence Awardee. This award reads, the Nightingale Excellence Award 2021 presented in recognition of your nursing academic and clinical excellence, advocacy, leadership, and potential for healthcare innovation. The winner of the 2021 Nightingale Excellence Award goes to Jordan Doran. Congratulations, Jordan. Just outside our building entrance is Sarah Marin the 2021 Generic Track Class Vice President. Sarah, will you please make the presentation for the 2021 Nursing Worlds Ahead Award? The Worlds Ahead recipient is a graduating senior who, as a class, we all agreed will elevate the nursing profession and achieve great things as a nurse, and will serve as a role model for nurses beyond the local community. The award reads, the nursing class of 2020-2021 recognizes that you embody the heart and soul of nursing and have the potential to move the nursing profession world ahead. The winner of the 2021 Nursing Worlds Ahead Award goes to Alenis Barrios. Just two weeks ago, our graduating nursing students were here in this very room, joined by family and friends, enjoying the first ever virtual reality ceremony experience. It is the first of its kind, a re-engineered, personalized, virtual production that honors each of our students' hard work and celebrates the successful completion of their nursing baccalaureate degree. Let's take a look. Yeah, we've come. 
come so far Cause this is our world And this is our time And these are our plans We're gonna let them shine This is our place In the human race And we won't stop dreaming No, we won't stop This is our world, this is our time, these are our plans. Our nursing pen is a treasured symbol of the education, dedication, and successes of nursing graduates. It is often worn by our graduates throughout their entire nursing careers. Friends and family members, you should be proud of your graduates' accomplishment. Each of our students is a testament to the inkling that challenging paths often lead to rewarding destinations. Each is a vital thread woven within this, your institution, a tapestry of excellence that produces effective clinicians, leaders, innovators, and philanthropic catalysts who will provide healthcare services to our local, national, and global communities. With only a lamp to light her way during the Crimean War, Ms. Florence Nightingale spent endless hours tending the wounded soldiers. As a tribute to Florence Nightingale's dedication to nursing, the Nightingale Oath is a tradition of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences pinning ceremony. During the virtual experience, students were joined by faculty as they performed the Nightingale Oath for the first time. Let's take a look. I solemnly pledge myself in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I shall abstain from whatever is deleterious Victorious and mischievous. And I shall not take or knowingly administer any harmful drug. I shall do all in my power to, to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. I shall be loyal to my work and devoted towards the welfare of those committed to my care. In the midst of a pandemic, Florida International University administrators, alongside the Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences Dean, faculty and staff have worked tirelessly to impart knowledge to prepare you to practice on the front lines of the global pandemic. Your efforts in the classroom, at the Star Center, the Diane Ramey Faulkner Care Center, and at your clinical placements have prepared you to be diverse healthcare professionals who are providers and leaders in the delivery of high quality, accessible, culturally competent, and compassionate care within a highly technological and global environment. Graduates, I charge you to enhance, shape, and strengthen healthcare quality. Rise above, reduce healthcare disparities and inequities. Be compassionate and infuse the college's values of truth, freedom, respect, responsibility, as well as excellence, compassion, caring, innovation, integrity, cultural competence, 
and collaboration while moving the nursing profession worlds ahead. On behalf of the Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Sciences and the entire university, we thank you for attending our pinning ceremony live stream event today. Graduates, you have left an indelible mark on FIU's fabric of excellence. Don't ever forget, you are fueled by intellect, driven by innovation and caring. Well, that was so amazing, so like personal, almost brought me to tears, and I think it was very great that you guys did this for us during COVID, and I really appreciate it. Being able to have this experience is amazing, and I know it means a lot to myself, all my fellow graduates, and our parents especially. You guys are awesome, a whole private pinning ceremony, that is just phenomenal. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> great ceremony, worthy of an amazing event. You know, in the middle of the pandemic, I can share this experience with her that to see all her hard work just come to completion. It was awesome that you guys set it up for us. Definitely, it was it went it exceeded my expectations, and it definitely reminds me of all the hard work that I put in to nursing school. And definitely, that's exactly what they did here today. It was amazing. It was very beautiful, um, and I appreciate everyone who was a part of it. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I know it's not traditional, but. This made a 10 times better. Oh, yeah. It was unexplainable to have, you know, my family so close to me the entire time. It's, you know, I'm without words. This experience was very personable. Um, I love the fact that we were able to see our old faculty from the hardest classes and they're congratulating us. So if we can make it through that, we can definitely make it through a pandemic and we can definitely make it through graduation and this career of ours. This was a very special moment. I, I love the way that it was, that it was private and, and well, I have cried so much and it's such a special moment that I love the way that it was done. Uh, I don't think I would have been the same emotion as it would have been a hundred of them. Nice touch, very detailed, and the fact that they took the time to show these students, these nursing students, how much it really means, not just here's your diploma, here's your pen, you know, have a nice life. They went all out and, and made it special for them. That's, that's what was special for them. The whole experience was very special and we didn't know what to expect and Emily, you know, played it low, low key and just absolutely fabulous and really, really special. You guys did a great job. Uh, it was very special to experience this when we could and I feel like maybe it was even maybe nicer in a way to share it even more intimately with our families. Um, thankful for the ceremony that was presented today for her hard work and a way for us to celebrate as a family. So we appreciate all the hard work that was put into this today. Thank you. It was beautiful. It was very heartwarming. And above all, it was something to share with a lot of our personal people in our family. I'm very grateful to be able to you know, have this moment with my daughter. And a great celebration for all the nursing students, especially during this pandemic. It's really what we needed. And thank you so much. Very heartwarming. Um, it's very memorable. Thank you from the ambiance, from the people around. Thank you so much for making us feel special. Honestly, it was an amazing experience. I'm glad we were able to have some type of pinning ceremony. I'm really grateful to the College of Nursing for giving us this opportunity. It was amazing. It is really pretty and it gets you kind of emotional seeing all the pictures and everyone saying all the presents that we had. Yeah, um, I would say despite the situation we're in, this was a great alternative. Like, it really feel like I feel like immersed in like the experience. And I'm really grateful to everyone who like took a part in it and made it happen. Thanks for this moment. It means the world for us. Speechless to say the least. Like, I choke up on my words because it's so emotional. But this has been like the most insane roller coaster I've ever been on. I think we'll ever be on. And just to have it all come down to this was more than everything it was more than we ever thought we would have and honestly i this is more than what the traditional ceremony would have probably given me in my family so thank you rick thank you faculty thank you Dean. on behalf of the nicole wertheim college of nursing and health sciences and florida international university we thank you for attending the first ever virtual nursing pinning ceremony live stream event